as we look to end the calendar year of 2023 and look ahead to 2024, it is difficult to know just which teams are going to rise and which are going to fall. And whilst I have theories of which I will cover in later videos, these four teams I keep getting stymied on. So let's talk about them. Let's start with the boys in red and black, and I want you to just do something for me, just wh whether you're at home, however you're watching this video, think of a number for me between 5 and 15. It can be one of those two. It can be somewhere in between. Essendon could finish at that number, on the ladder, no matter what you're thinking of, and it wouldn't surprise me. How the hell... We're meant to know whether the Ben Mackay experiment will work, how much of a leap will their third midfielder take, whether that is a Will Setterfield, whether it is Dylan Shield, whether it's Elijah Sardis, of which I absolutely think that it should be, and he should be seen as a massive smoky for the rising star. Whether it's a smoky or not, he should definitely be in more of that conversation. Are they going to find goals not through Peter Wright? Who knows? If they do, they could absolutely be in the bottom half of the eight and break that finals drought. If not, they're stuck in no man's land again and Brad Scott's appointment looks a little bit frosty, although it's not necessarily his fault. This is a club's culture now who doesn't even look like turning it around. But considering if they don't win a final this year, it'll be 20 straight seasons without a finals win. That's a huge problem, as no one needs to tell Essendon fans at all. But the concern rises. Where they finish, I've got no idea. Do I like what they did in the off-season? Yes, I did. So I am more on the optimistic than pessimistic side. But frankly, who knows? That defense with ball in hand looks pretty good. Without the ball in hand and how easily they allow other teams to transition the ball and use it really well in their own back half or the opposition's forward half is startling. So where Essendon finish next year right now is a genuine mystery for me. Gold Coast as well are another one of these teams that on paper should make a rise. But on paper, shouldn't they have been good at some point throughout? Now, you're going to point to 2014, I know, but come on, guys, that's 10 years ago. We can move on from it, surely. Dimmer should be taking them up the ladder. Now, there are no active coaches that have won flags that did it at their second job. They're all first jobs. So that's a concern, but whether Gold Coast can propel themselves into finals or not is going to depend largely on injuries, as we know, but also considering some other teams around that mark and who already made the eight last year, it's game on. Again, Gold Coast, I don't think they're a top four side. I'm pretty confident they're not going to be a top four side. So I think their range does start at the sixth department, but can we confidently say we'd be shocked if they finished 14th? I don't think so. My instincts probably put them around the, the 8th to 11th mark, but even then, who knows? They've started seasons brilliantly in the past and faded out, but their identity shaping under Damien Hardwick needs to be sooner rather than later, or 2024 is going to be a waste as well. Can the Saints back it up? That is the question. My instincts say the Saints are on a really good path, and... I don't really know why the doubt creeps in a little bit. I don't see them making the jump to a top four. I don't see them not improving enough to be really out of the eight. But what if the Saints just are what they are? Getting to a final was good enough last year, but if they don't take any kind of step and they languish a little bit, you know, what's happening? It's not like they've got a bunch of 30-year-olds that they need to transition out of. This list is in a pretty good spot. Uh, age and experience wise their experienced guys are not old that are best 22 material is what i should say i loved what they did in the draft i love the fact they blocked west coast from getting dan Curtin because i love hearing about that behind the scenes stuff i love that they took lance collard from underneath west coast's nose as well so a lot of good things are happening for the saints at the moment but Let's stop talking and just start watching. I don't really know what to make of the Saints. I can see every reason as to why they'll be better, the same, or worse than last year. Which one is it? No clue. And finally, Freo. Now, in my hot takes video, someone had Freo making top four, which I do disagree with. But again, 
the improvement should come. But all of the teams on this list, apart from Freo, so the first three, uh, the, on f the, the list needs to improve. And in some cases, it absolutely did. In fact, in all three of their cases, their list definitely got better in the off-season. But the other three teams, we don't really have doubt over the coaches. Dimmer's just starting. Ross got the Saints back to a final. And Brad Scott is only in his second season this year, so he's going to get a little bit of a pass until things go disastrously wrong. Even if they don't, they might not, which is good. My biggest doubt over Freo is the coaching, not the list. The list is pretty good. Is it complete? No. No one's list is. I would argue Collingwood's list isn't finished yet, yet they're the reigning premier. That's the awesome thing about sport. You're never in a perfect spot. But come on. Sarong, Brayshaw, Hayden Young should be a midfielder. They've got good depth in the back line, but they don't penetrate with any kind of well-thought-out plan coming out of the defensive 50. We know they've struggled with tall forwards in the past, but Jai Amos is your number one man now. Hopefully he can take another leap and get towards that 55-60 goal kind of area. What can their smalls produce on their day? And this is quite weird. This Frio team on their day could beat anyone. Therefore, if they make it to a grand final, you can give them a chance. But here's the problem. I've got no faith in them winning finals. That's the weird thing. They have to win at least two, potentially three finals to make a granny, and I don't see them doing that. Where they finish, though, will they make finals? Again, another team that could finish pretty much anywhere from 6th to 16th, and I would not be surprised at all. Justin Longmuir right now is probably the most underrated in-trouble coach in the competition, and he's a very smart football man so fingers crossed he can get it right and the purple haze can get better but these are the four teams that are giving me huge mystery vibes what do you guys think comment below let me know is there a team that you're struggling to comprehend just how good they'll be next year i love engaging with you guys in the comments like the video if you like the video more people will see it subscribe to join the daz talks footy family there's another video on your screen here if you want to see a little bit more it does in here about his footy opinions have a fantastic day i will see you very soon. Goodbye.